Hi, I have been sitting by my setup here, working every day from home for hours at a time. Hours! This has caused me lack of stamina, physical weakness, high cholesterol, blood clot in leg. So I was a little bit worried about my health. And therefore, I bought one of these under the desk miniature thread mills. Yeah, ignore those. It's from the couple of times I almost fell off today. <laughs> and I heard a bunch of good things about it, but I have to experience it for myself. See, I have one of these raising desks I had bought a couple of years back, and I thought working behind it, standing, make me lead a healthier lifestyle. But I was wrong. I realized that just standing a few minutes behind it, I would fatigue my back hurt, my joints, muscles, I get tired easily. So I almost never raised my table and kept sitting for the entire workday. But I knew one thing, I could walk for hours without stopping and not feel fatigue. So I bought this guy and hopefully now I can walk and work and hopefully not die in the process. I know this might not be for everyone. I know some people that they have to stop and look at their phone and they can't look at it while walking. But I don't think I have any problem with this, so we will see. Now, this guy I bought, which is not sponsored of course, I just bought something random with good reviews. All I'm really asking from this guy is to not fail under my weight, which is um, taking clothing into account, I would say, I'm around 200 pounds and what I expect from myself is walking all day instead of sitting all day which would make an infinite improvement in my lifestyle oops so let's get back to me in a month and see what happens can I continuously walk on this thing while working and do whatever I want will this thing last under my feet and will I lose weight and how much I'll get back to you on that <music> You may not want to walk and work, but you could still walk and learn and be productive thanks to my sponsor Brilliant.org. You can learn about neural networks or efficient programming while walking, or physics and science while commuting, or math, algebra, or geometry while on toilet. With Brilliant, you have no excuse not to learn anymore, except maybe while using power tools. Don't mix anything with power tools. Focus on power tools. Brilliant is the best place to learn complex concepts from basic to advanced levels through their interactive courses and quizzes. For example, I love how physics and mechanics are taught by you playing with parameters and seeing how the outcome is affected. To start, you need to understand what you need to learn or improve upon. You sign up for free at brilliant.org slash electroboom and get a 30-day free trial. Then take a learning path that suits your learning need and Brilliant takes care of the rest by personalizing your learning, setting goals and making sure you learn in great detail that sticks in your brain. 30 days is a ton of time to cover many things, after which the first 200 of you signing up from my link brilliant.org slash electroboom get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription and continue learning forever. Look at this, why am I losing so much of the sole of my shoe for some reason? Am I not stepping well? Well, better my shoe than my skin. So, I've been walking for a few days now and it's actually been quite enjoyable. But, something I noticed is that I can't use my old headsets anymore because I get quite warm and with these foams on my skin, it sweats under the foam and hurts my skin. So instead, I bought one of these sport headsets that goes straight into your ears and keeps your... Oh sh**! The hell was that? It zapped me straight in the ears. So with these headsets, you won't have any... What the f What's wrong with these headsets? They keep shutting me in the ears. Such a waste of money. It's not a headset problem, is it? I think I figured what the problem is. See, me walking on this thing 
my body picks up charge from friction. It, basically, this thing is like a Van de Graaff machine. And the outside of these headsets are made of plastic, so there is no direct connection between my skin and these headsets. So my body gets to build up voltage high enough that eventually it discharges to the ground through these headsets. And of course, this is a wired headset. That's why this is connected to ground. And that's where you would have benefited from a Bluetooth headset. So I decided to use one of these static discharge bands. One side of it on my skin and the other side I just shove it into my metal table to discharge me to the table. And now I can safely use my headset without getting shocked. But now there is a different problem. Look at my display. <laughs> it keeps turning off and on. Damn it! I don't think my metal table is connected to earth properly so it picks up charge with my body and probably discharges somewhere that creates great electromagnetic field that interferes with the display and it's shutting down which means I have to connect it to a proper earth well my extension cord does have earth yeah, this whole table is powder coated and isolated too so I directly alligator clip my wire to earth and we should be fine I should probably find a better earth connection to myself later but hey so far so good no more display shutdowns on the bright side filming this part I walked over 2.3 miles or three and a half kilometers <laughs> It's been a bit over a month now, and this needs some service. Did you wonder where all the sole of my shoe that was worn out on the belt went to? Well, here it is, all inside of this thing. I have to vacuum it well. I feel like some of that garbage may have gone into the motor too. Of course, turn off the power before committing anything like this. Well, let's turn the motor on to see if it makes any funny noises. It did feel a little bit strange. It was shaking, but it went away. Anything falls out of it? Maybe turning at faster speed, release the garbage inside of it. Okay, sounds good. Do the monthly lubrication. Hmm, the motor. Doesn't sound right, you hear it? I'm servicing my treadmill again after another two months and look at all the gunk that got onto the roller of this thing which are basically plastic melted from the sole of my shoe. <laughs> and you know, all the hair and garbage that I shed. So I guess I cleaned them all up and vacuumed the whole thing and oil it and we'll be good to go again. Look at this. Let me see if I can measure the belt's temperature. Uh, 52 almost. That's probably the reason the oil starts smelling because it's warm. And probably the reason the sole of my shoe is melting away. Uh, it's not super warm, but I wish there was a way to keep the belt cooler. Maybe I should just blow a fan on it. Something like this maybe? Okay, it seems like the fan is keeping the belt temperature closer to like 43 degrees or something. Man, this is not convenient. Every couple of months I have to open the whole thing up and vacuum the garbage out of it. And now the motor is stuck. It, the whole thing doesn't turn anymore. I have to see what's stuck and fix it. What is... There is molten plastic coming out of the motor. Yuck. Okay, we got it out. The rotor seems to be totally stuck. Oh man, what is all this over the rotor? Did the motor overheat and epoxy melted or something? Look at all the garbage I got out of the motor. It's clean now. Hopefully all those molten stuff was not the coating of the wires and they are not shorted. Otherwise the motor is doomed. Well, it's back together now. 
but if you haven't opened and closed the motor yet just note that all the parts of the motor have to go together in the same direction so i mark them to make sure they align well it's turning freely but the question now is will it turn yup turns smoothly i guess the motor was getting super hot look at the plastic deformed a little bit around here thankfully the driver board seems to be in good shape ah. oh. i thought i had turned it off what well, it was off something interesting i noticed about the power connection and switch here you see this is the power switch and when i turn it on it is intended to connect the live wire to the circuit and when you power it off it's supposed to disconnect the live wire from the circuit right Wrong! see they used black and red for live and neutral assuming that the red is live and black is neutral and that's how it's connected to the circuit if you can see it and the black goes directly to the black of the power cord which is the live wire so the switch is actually just switching the neutral on and off and when you turn it off the entire circuit is connected to live see i'm measuring somewhere on the board to earth and it's not zero <laughs> and that's why it gave me a shock Fortunately, there is an earth connection, so if there is an accidental short to the body of the treadmill, it's gonna pop a fuse or something. So I guess it's relatively safe, and I don't feel like rewiring all these, so I'll leave it as is and just be more careful next time. Well, back in business. <laughs> hmm, I think I should give it a break every half an hour and let the motor cool down for 10 minutes or something. But treadmills i suppose would benefit from a motor temperature sensor you know if it overheats just stop it and give it a warning do it in next revision damn it one month pass and i have to service this motor again seems like it's getting close to its end of life under my big weight and i'm still pretty confident it's not the drudder ah, damn it how did I forget to unplug this again? The idiots who wired this switch here, you have to disconnect live, not neutral. Here I am trying to stay healthy and instead I have to service this junk. Yeah, I don't see anything visually wrong with the motor, but when it runs, it vibrates like crazy. So I'm afraid maybe some of the windings are shorting together. Let's power it on again and see the vibration. Ah! Before I give up on the motor, let me drive it from my power supply to see if the problem is actually the motor or the driver circuit. Oh, no. Well, obviously, it vibrates like crazy. It's the motor. It's gone. Yeah. So, I guess no more walking until I find a solution for this junk. I guess I'll be standing still because I hate gaining all that weight I lost back. Today I was the lowest I've ever been since I started walking on this thing. Look, I'll see if I can replace the motor or just buy a whole new treadmill. This one smells like urine when it gets hot. Such dense urine that pierces your bones. It's been almost a month since my treadmill broke down and my weight has been slowly creeping back up since I returned to mostly sitting. But I signed up for Taekwondo classes. It's very good workout and hopefully it'll keep me in shape while I'm waiting for my treadmill to come. I talked to the Amazon seller and they were going to send me a replacement motor for free as part of their warranty but the motor had gone obsolete. So instead they sent me a brand new treadmill which is an upgraded version of this old one and the upgrades include the motor and some electronics. I'll believe those upgrades when I see them. It just makes me sad that just after 9 months I have to throw this unit away. What else can I do with it? I have a spare treadmill that I don't need and I'm gonna give it away to... Um, yeah.
Okay, here's the old one. And here's the inside of the new one. What's the difference? It was supposed to be upgraded. Well, I mean, it does look like the motor is slightly different between the old one and the new one. Mm, yeah. The motor is exactly the same size. If they had sent me the new motor, it would exactly fit the old unit and I could have get that one running. I didn't need a new one. Can you please send me the upgraded motor so I can fix the old unit? Here's the difference between the two motors, I guess. The brush on the new motor is much larger than the brush on the old motor. And look at this again, the black wire comes here and goes straight to the circuit. <sighs> I think someone in the factory thinks that the black means ground or something. Well, the upgrades seem minimal and they didn't include a motor thermal protection. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'll peel this motor label off a little bit. I have a thermocouple with some thermal paste and I'll place it under this label so this label can hold it in place like this and just like that i should be able to monitor the temperature of the motor great now we're back to walking so i guess if it goes above 100 degrees i can stop it and let it cool down and on the plus side it doesn't smell like urine <laughs> well mainly because i haven't lubricated the brand new treadmill yet i'm assuming this lubricant and the treadmill together create that terrible smell after one hour of continuous walking you can see the temperature is almost settled around 60 61 degrees which should be fine really unless they use crappy glues and epoxies that would melt at very low temperatures and the motor is ruined Look at this, I have lubricated the treadmill belt and now it's running at a much lower temperature, only 49 degrees after one hour. <laughs> and that's not the most important thing, see? It doesn't smell like urinating fish oil anymore. <laughs> wow, it must be the new oil, I bought this one if anyone cares, that doesn't smell. So it must have been the original lubricant they provided with their treadmill. What do they have in there? Fish oil? Well, the treadmill only allows me to walk for 100 minutes and I was walking at two miles an hour. So 3.32 miles I walked and the temperature is around 53 degrees. Pretty good. Well, I still have work to do. So I turn it back on and start walking. <laughs> Well, the Amazon seller sent me a new motor for an additional $40 and it is not the upgraded better motor. So I guess they had this, but I am happy with the better motor treadmill anyways and I get to fix the broken one. Funny thing is the new motor came with its fan and the ferrite filter all smashed in shipment. I could ask for a replacement, but I already have these parts from the old motor and I hate to waste parts. Yo, it's running! <laughs> hey, let's give it a try. Oh, jeez! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is it? The belt is slipping! Thank God they sent a replacement belt I can replace that with. Why the f is it so big? Damn it! I have to buy a replacement belt and fix it later. A whole year has passed, and now it's time for a review shoe sole is totally gone. Well, the upgraded treadmill is still running fine, but I won't recommend this model because it looks exactly the same as the old version, so you don't know what you get. If you get the old version, unless you walk less than half an hour to an hour a day maximum, you might burn the motor. And for God's sake, make sure the lubricant that comes with it doesn't smell. But how was walking on an under desk treadmill? It is great for me. I walk anywhere from 5 to 20 kilometers a day easily. I only sit if I am very tired or need to be stationary to say draw something or if it is a very brain intensive work. And when I do, I feel bad. I can see my health bar dropping. But when I walk, even if I do something absolutely useless like watching a KSI's try not to laugh video. <laughs> 
I feel like I'm being very productive. I can answer emails, watch videos, and even edit my videos just fine. I went from inactive to very active. I had higher than limit cholesterol and had pills six months before starting to walk and three months after. But where the pills haven't had significant effects, walking dropped my levels right inside safe levels. So I stopped taking pills because I could feel their side effects. And later blood tests showed that the cholesterol levels stayed at safe levels. I'll keep testing annually to make sure they stay down. But let's look at my daily walking data. I started strong at the beginning, going 15 to 20 kilometers at a time. But it seems I walked less over time. Maybe I should walk more. Basically, I recorded my treadmill walking distance per day. So if I traveled or walked elsewhere or had to sit down for filming or something broke down, I didn't walk. Looking at the weight chart, it was a slow drop over the year, which is fine with me. I want to be healthy over time, not punch my body into a lower weight. I had a quick drop of around five pounds over the first months. You know what they say, it's easier to lose weight at the beginning. And then we travel to Cuba. Whenever we travel, I typically lose a bit of weight because we walk a ton everywhere during the travel. But when we came back, the drop was quite steady over a long period of time. There are these spikes here and there because we partied at our parents and they make us eat a lot. It usually drops right back down. Then we visited Open Sauce in which I lost some good amount of weight too. That's what visiting and shaking hands with a thousand viewers per day do to an introvert. By the way, Open Sauce will be this year in June as well. If you want to meet me or a bunch of other creators and makers from all around the world and maybe help me lose some weight in the process, you can get your tickets now. So I was steadily losing weight until the treadmill broke down and during this one month the treadmill was out of commission, I gradually gained some weight. But right afterwards, it started going back down again. Here, my weight loss accelerated a bit. Maybe because I started going to Taekwondo classes twice a week, one hour each. Here, Linus upgraded my setup. Thanks Linus, go watch his video. But I needed a few days to get used to the new setup and rearrange it for the functionality I needed. So I didn't walk and my weight went up a little bit. Then I lost a tad bit of weight traveling to Mexico and then I traveled to Las Vegas for CES. In Vegas Strip, the food is super expensive and all fried and fattening. And I was sure when I came back that I would have gained like three pounds. But then I had lost three pounds. Had the stress of gaining weight made me lose more weight? Or had I gone insane about losing weight? But right in the next few days, I gained like four pounds, so I was in control. But for some reason, after Vegas, my weight has gone through some violent oscillations with the average increasing a little bit. Maybe I'm gaining muscles. It's funny, I didn't really want to control my eating habits. I just wanted to walk and see the results. I would see the graph rising a little bit and for some reason I wasn't hungry anymore and I was walking more. <laughs> it seems like having the data in front of you subconsciously helps you regulate your activities. So far I've dropped by 12 pounds to around 188 pounds and I think a healthy weight for me is around 180 to 185 pounds. So I'll try to keep it in that range. In in conclusion, I recommend walking and working. It worked well for me and made me much healthier. It didn't hurt my eyes and I can still work. Frankly, this is the only way I could make myself walk. It's a personality thing. See, to me working out is hard work and time consuming, especially alone. At the same time, being an introvert, I just want to stay inside and keep my brain busy. But with this, I stay inside and I don't need the dedicated workout time. Everyone is different though, but take a shot at it. If you need to be more active, you might like it.